Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet and another best of the week video and I think the talk of the week was Tyson Fury obviously seen out on the town on the drink and then as you can see here this is a screenshot of or still of um, him being escorted out of a pub and we cut to another one with him uh, face planting on the uh, the concrete outside and i think a lot of us when we would have seen this uh, circulating on social media we're probably wondering what is going on with Tyson Fury. Is he off the wagon? Is he going to sort of into a spiral that he won't come out of? Will Undisputed um, 2 happen? Is he going to, um, you know, uh, be able to go through with it? Will the demons of the lost, yada, 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 will it catch up with him? And uh, shortly after, a day or so later, he was out on social media filmed back in the gym letting everyone know that you know he was in fact fine saying listen up i've conquered everything in boxing titles records the lot but i've never had to come back from a loss on december 21st in riyadh in the heart of the kingdom the king will reclaim his throne and become undisputed Usika, I'm coming for you. Get ready for the Gypsy King. The path to redemption is all mine. I know what I have to do. I saw my shortcomings and best believe I am inevitable. So a little bit of a, a Thanos sort of nod there. He effectively says largely the same thing in the video and he still looks in pretty decent condition actually. I mean I know some people have sort of said did he lose too much weight um, for that for the fight but I think he needed to try count of what Usyk was going to do. The fact is uh, he was a lot more hittable than um, he expected and Usyk was able to find the target obviously found the target a lot in round nine. I think the thing is, you know, Tyson Fury, we know he likes uh, a bit of a drink and sometimes uh, previously other stuff as well. Uh, him going out in, you know, his local you know, town, having some drinks, getting through. I mean, for most sports people, obviously, you're in the, the spotlight and something like this happens. It's going to be headlines. So at this stage, I'm not really reading too much into it. He was clearly told that he needed to get out and sort of um, basically stick a pin in it and try to, you know, in the headlines, in the speculation, show that he was fine in the gym, training and ready to go and really willing, able for the rematch, etc. Because tens of millions of dollars on the line and I'm sure he wants a, a slice of that pie if he can keep things on the rails. I mean, let's face it though. I mean, Tyson Fury probably just ticking over doing a little bit of fitness he's not in the training camp but I've literally just come off you know the undisputed fight the second fights in six months effectively you know he needs some downtime he's not going to be able to train and be on peak form for that length of time they're probably not officially entering training camp for a couple of months you have a situation as well with the first fight it was rescheduled so you know they were training for longer for that first one and arguably you could make it maybe ask a point was he overtrained? did he train for too long but regardless of the you know what people think and are saying about fury's performance and the loss it appears there is going to be a second fight so hopefully we see more of tyson fury clips in the gym rather than clips of him falling down face drunk um, on the pavement because not a good look for him but obviously uh, he was told he needed to uh, get on top of it and make sure that um, you know he sort of uh, quelled you know the obviously insatiable social media appetite and make sure that um, you know he was showing that he was on point and not a danger to himself and the second fight happening. Jared Anderson, and yes, this is actually from his social media. Him posting this uh, on his this is a terrible photo weird he's facing martin bacoli on august 3rd as we know and he's actually changed trainers and i think for a lot of us and i've said this here on the channel also uh, different videos on patreon you have a situation in the past year or so anderson feels like he's been drifting a little bit couldn't get motivated for some of the opposition and maybe he'd also been plateauing so he is now going to be working with Tyson Fury's trainer Sugar Hill obviously he sparred with Fury and been in camps with him so Sugar Hill is a good trainer but obviously with his other trainer because he apparently according to reports 
uh, Darry Riley, who's trained um, him from day one as a kid and in the pro ranks, he's also expected to be part of the corner. So sometimes that can lead to a bit of a sticky situation. But if Sugar Hill is the number one voice and in control of the corner, hopefully things are okay. But actually, you have Turkey LL Sheikh uh, saying here, I want to thank Jared Anderson for taking my advice and seeking out to coach and train a Sugar Hill to train him for this upcoming fight. So, uh, yeah, maybe Turkey was the one that swayed him. But I do think that he kind of had reached the point where he needed a little bit more, even if it's a change of perspective, style, a few other things. Sometimes, you know, that can really help a fighter, especially one that's trained with someone for so long. And as we know as well, Anderson's kind of been a little bit off the rails in the past year or so, a couple of different arrests, and one of them was during a training camp. So I think he may need this more than anyone just to freshen up you know you know his training and what he's doing and maybe taking him out of some of the um situations he's uh that have led him down the wrong path previously with his out of the ring issues queensbury promoter frank warren is paying tribute to daniel dubois trainers saying um don and this is referring to don charles who has recently taken on daniel dubois deserves a lot of credit as does Martin Bowers, and that was his uh, previous trainer. Martin has done a great job with him. They're both excellent trainers. He's moved on, and he's with Don, and Don's doing a fabulous job. They're very good, and I've got a lot of respect for them, and I'm pleased for Don. Don's done a really good job and got him focused. He's obviously matured a lot. He's not the same guy he was two, three, four years ago. He's maturing as a person and as a fighter. And they are talking about the um, a fight with Anthony Joshua uh, to be at Wembley Stadium the Saudis are looking to put on a card at Wembley in a couple of months uh, and he says he's now the interim champion with the IBF the IBF will decide what they're going to do with their title and will go from there irrespective of that Wembley Stadium needs a main event it needs a real strong main event and there's nothing stronger in this country because Tyson's committed to fighting on the 21st of December in the rematch against Usyk uh, than that fight and given Dubois' uh, resurgence and confidence and um, Anthony Joshua needing a dancing partner while he waits for a potential crack at uh, Tyson Fury or Usyk or whoever, you know, that's a pretty good fight based on where we are. And actually, uh, Dan Raphael had reported um, potentially for that card uh, a number of fighters, uh, and you can see here on screen, but also including Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark, both those uh, guys promoted by boxer but some of these promotional barriers coming down and wardley and clark being on that card along with some of the other names like jai opatai you know that starts to be a pretty good card and as we know wardley and fraser clark the first fight it was a it meshed well it was an absolute slugfest and and i'm really keen to see it again given the brutality of the first fight uh, Moses Itoma says that he is easing into life in the uh, spotlight in particular. He's getting used to the media. He says, I'm enjoying it. I used to think of boxing as a job, but I'm starting to enjoy it. The outside of it, getting to know the people. I'm blessed. I've been doing boxing since I was a kid, so I'm kind of used to everything. The only thing I'm not used to are the cameras and the media, but I've started it now and I'm getting more used to it. And I guess with um, quite a lot of younger fighters, it is going to take some time to warm up. But I think we're starting to see, you know, some some buds of his personality starting to sort of open up and he's starting to reveal a little bit more of himself. And uh, if he continues to win in the ring and, uh, you know, put on good performances, really some of that other stuff, it doesn't matter so much. But a guy who is good on the mic certainly can help sell himself a little bit more. And rounding out this uh, best of the week video, so the Armenian heavyweight, Gergen Hovanesian, the 6-0 prospect, he'll be back in July, July the 26th, on an MVP card that will be on zone. he'll be facing Robert Hall Jr. And he's a really interesting um, prospect, Gergen Hovanesian, put in a really good performance against um, Michael Polite Coffey. Well, it's about 18 months ago, but because PBC hasn't really had their heavyweights out much, and obviously they've you know effectively sort of wound down a lot of their operations to a large extent, Hovanesian being back out again, you know, is good for him, and I hope we do see him a lot more because uh, he's a talent, and I think he's a guy in a few years could be making some noise. What do you make of it all?
drop a comment loud enough and hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out